Hi there, this is a video about uh, building lead sheets in Finale. I'm going to be going over just the main points, just hitting the highlights because it can get pretty in-depth, all the ways in which you can customize Finale and everything. So I'm just going to make recommendations for the earlier stages of dealing with this. Um, lead sheets are, of course, um, uh, music where the, the S, sort of the central, very fundamental elements of a piece of music are represented. Um, the title, the style, the tempo, not always the tempo even, and melody, and chord symbols, and then if there are lyrics, sometimes lyrics. Um, extra things you can include in a lead sheet quite commonly are rhythm hits, um, hidden harmony or bass layer, or hidden drums or other instruments, um, if that suits your purpose. A big thing to consider is layout, appearance, and a big part of that is the font that you choose. Um, there's lots of ways to customize the fonts, but I, again, I would say uh, I wouldn't get into that right away too much. I'll show you some of that, but it can get pretty thorny. Um, but if you go with a pre-selected font that you like and go with that and maybe just to si adjust the size a bit, that's probably the, the most trouble-free way to deal with it. So let's look at um, uh, most, of the, uh, most of the editing that you would do in that area with the font and everything is under the document options menu under the document menu itself, which is right here, document options, and then there's font, fonts. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's use a little example. Here's a really professional lead sheet. It's got, uh, it's got all the elements we need. It's got um, lyrics, chords, etc., melody, very sp nicely spaced, very easy to read. Um, it's got a few extra things, like it's got some alternative changes in parentheses and things like that. And it's got letters for sections, A and B. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll see if we can copy something similar to that. You'll notice that there's certain choices made, like they're, they're choosing MI for minor as opposed to minus symbol. They're putting MA7 instead of MAJ7. So these are all issues that you need to um, decide on, you know, what you want. And eventually, as you refine your abilities here, you will start saving a template, a lead sheet template that will be uh, suitable for you. And then every time you start a new lead sheet, you don't have to start from scratch. You can use your template and maybe modify it as you go. So where do we start? Well, you obviously, if you get a template from somebody else that you really like to start with, that's that saves you a lot of time. But um, in Finale, what you can do is you can start with a um, default document and you can modify it, or you can go to um, the setup wizard. Let's talk about the setup wizard first. So you go there, and you can choose things like um, instrumentation and everything. Of course, we're doing a single stave, so um, you can just go forward and choose a single staff. And that I believe that if you don't choose anything, it's going to be an engraved style, which would be more like a uh, printed style. Um, and then there's also a handwritten style, which looks a little bit more like this. This is another style that's not in Finale. Um, so you can make those decisions based on, uh, you know, what you like the look of. And um, so, for example, say we chose handwritten, say next. We chose a blank staff, say add that one stave. That's all you need for a lead sheet, give it a title and so on. And then uh, it would look like this. And then you could get a sense of it. If we just quickly roughed it out, if I do this, do Command A to select everything, and then I do Command Shift M to get the number of measures, and I do four measures per line, which is typical. Spacing still isn't good, but I got the right number of 400 measures per line, approximately. Um, a good way to space it out is to go to the um, Page Layout tool, click and drag over the handles on the left side here, and then arrow down hold down the arrow and it will just sort of stretch out kind of evenly to cover the whole page. And typically a lead sheet will have um, 32 measures or maybe 35 if there's a pickup measure as there is in, in this one. See right there. A uh, good default thing is to be um, you know building a pickup measure because you're going to probably need it. Just basically copy this thing, um, but you could use your own font. So uh, we want if we wanted a pickup measure here, um, I would insert a measure by doing uh, uh, control click, insert measure stack there, and then I would make this first measure into a pickup measure. And the way you do that is go up here, 
and come down to pickup measure and choose how much time you want in the pickup and we'll just say because we're going to copy auto moves we need three quarter notes of time which is a dotted half note say that and you can always change that later and then we put in our three quarter notes and I'm just going to go kind of fast because I'm just showing you guys how to do it I'm not going to do the whole thing right now and I forgot that we needed it we didn't do our key yet couple of things too we got to get our double bar line so I click on that I'm in the escape I did escape to get to the selection tool control click bar line type double and then I'm going to do um, I uh, let's see I'm going to do key so we need the key select all go to the key signature tool there it is now I've already put some notes in if I hadn't put any notes in I could just do my key this key is actually a minor key um, G minor and uh, if I didn't have the notes there um, I could just say you know say okay and it would just create that but if I don't do anything else it will transpose the notes so just so you know if you did have a bunch of notes in and you wanted to transpose something um, and you wanted to keep there's different ways to transpose and notice that I have the notes um, on the lines that I, I want them to eventually be. So what I can do is I can say hold notes hold notes to the same staff times, uh, lines modally which means it will keep the notes right there on that line but of course they'll be altered by the key signature so I'm going to do that. There's my key signature now let me get the right number of lines you know the single page that we want and now that now we have to decide whether we like the way um, everything is in this default uh, set the default settings that we're getting from finale and everything can be changed um, and once you change it the way you like it then you can save that as a template so um, obviously the title can you can change the size by selecting all and doing command shift greater than makes it I mean less than makes it smaller greater than makes it makes it bigger um, you can move things around this is all in the text tool um, I got rid of that. Let's see what you can have. You don't have to have the word score there. That's usually not present in a lead sheet. You can put in, you know, the style indications and everything. So I'm going to skip over the obvious stuff and get to the more um, basic stuff. So I'm going to put in a few notes and a few chord symbols. We're going to decide if we like the way it looks and show you how to change that if you need to. And then we'll put in a few lyrics and then that will be enough for you to then go ahead and do the work of finishing it. So I'm zooming in, and I'm going to do um, I'm going to do the uh, let's see. I guess I'll do the title real quick. And you can see it's uh, it's a very different font from the one that we have over here. But if you messed around for a while with different fonts, you could probably find something pretty close to that if you care about doing that. Um, now, to have the letters, the letter, the rehearsal letters under the expression tool, and you can have different, they're called rehearsal marks, and you can have the automatic ones, or you can uh, use measure numbers, or you can make your own. But um, this one I'm going to use the default one, there it is. And then I could come down here and do my second one, my B sections right there. And I could just hit that. And notice that there's a shortcut for that for, from the, the, the letter M. I can just click M and it will just add the next uh, rehearsal letter in order. Um, okay, I think we're ready for chord symbols. Now let's see what the chord symbols look like. Now in Berkeley, usually we use M, uh, minus symbol for minor whereas this is using MI, so it's up to you. You could change a font. You can buy, you can load different fonts into a, um, you can load in font libraries into um, a document. You can buy font libraries, like you could buy this font library if you really liked it, um, stuff like that. So anyway, well, let's just look, with what, look at what we have in the document already. So I'm gonna say C, and I'm gonna use the minus symbol because we're at Berkeley. And I say, okay, I hit that. It doesn't, doesn't have it in there, so we have to say yes and add it. 
And at the time that we added it, if we didn't like the way it looked, if it was too small or something, we could have made it bigger. Let me just show you how to do that really quick. Uh, that would be edit chord definition. There it is. I could edit that. I could make, you know, I could select that thing and then make it bigger, you know, with a bigger font. And, you know, right now it's 16. I could make it 18 to make. So now, um, if if you're quite happy with the way those uh, chord symbols appear, then you're in good shape. If you don't like them, if there's something about them you don't like, you want to use a different font, then you would go to the Document Options menu, choose Fonts, and you have fonts for lyrics, text, note heads, and chords. And there's multiple things under here, like verse, you can have a different font for the verse and the chorus, things like that. And under chords, you can have the symbol itself, which you can see is currently set to this thing called Broadway Copyist. Then you can have the suffix, which is almost always the same as the first part of the chord, the copyist, and you notice it's a little bit smaller, which is typical. And then there's the alteration, and then there's uh, fretboard. So those are extra things. Once you, if you make any changes, you have to, we didn't make any changes, but if you did this apply button would be there and you'd click apply. The only thing you have to be careful about is that, um, and by the way, this is where you would load a font library. Um, is that if you um, alter the size of a font that's not designed to be a lot bigger, it might start to look a little weird and stuff. So you just have to be aware of that. Um, so now move on to your lyrics. So we'll say uh, lyrics, the lyrics tool there, the falling leaves. And when you do split words, you do the first part of the word, then you hit the, the, the key that's like the minus key for a dash. And then you do the rest of the word. Okay, and when it eventually redraws, you'll see, yeah, then you can see the little dash there. Now you know how to put in the lyrics. Oh, okay, now that's, I'm glad that happened because it, it allowed me to point something out, that discordant sound. That's because we have this, there's this uh, function in Finale called Enable Chord Playback, and it sounds like it'd be a good thing, but it's actually uh, very disruptive. It's, uh, it doesn't work well at all. So under the Chord menu, down below it says Enable Chord Playback. And the problem is that it often plays, it interprets the chords incorrectly. Like, remember, it's better to just get rid of that. So just unselect that, and now it will just play back the chords that you've written. And so on, okay? So then you get back to your, um, go back to page view and you see this extra staff and what you do is you just simply hide it by clicking to the left and then you go to staff tool and control click to get all your things and you choose force hide staff collapse. And then it goes away so now it just looks like a normal lead sheet and you can uh, use it just like that but in the background it will be playing back the chords. Sometimes it won't play it back unless you you got to click lower in the staff. Because if you click up here, it just plays back the top stave. So you have to click down here. Um, Spacebar click will play back from wherever you are. And of course, you can just go Command E, and then you can see everything and play back there. So that's all I'm going to do for this session. But you have enough information now, and what I'd like you to do is go ahead and copy this lead sheet and then if you want to experiment a little bit you know keep a co keep that original and then make a copy of it and then experiment with some different fonts you could go into for example um, document options and change the font and see what that looks like you know, start changing your your font now if you change the chord suffix it doesn't change it retroactively so the way you have to change it rec retroactively is to go into the chord tool chord suffix and go under um, change chord suffix fonts and then you have to tell it to find all the suffixes that are at such and such a size and change it to such and such a size or to change it to such and such a font and then it will do it. Alright, so that's it for now.